through 19. And uh, David had called uh, my wife earlier. He couldn't get a hold of me to tell me that it had changed to the scripture reading. So I thought, well, I'll just read all of, all of the book. Um, that took five minutes. There, there's only three, three chapters in it. But the odd thing I found about it is chapter three, it says, at least this information I'm being given is the prayer was sung by the prophet. So it, it, it wasn't a, a normal prayer like we would have here. He sang it. So that kind of opened up something in my mind that I got a tune going. <laughs> That might be. I, 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 God would probably rather me just recite it. But, uh, but what we're uh, looking at is three, chapter three, and we're starting at seventeen, and it says, "Even though the fig trees have no blossoms, and there are no grapes on the vine, even though the olive crop." fails, and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields, and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. Good morning, church. Okay, so we have to take care of a little business this morning. So it's Jacqueline's birthday today. So we need to sing happy birthday to Jacqueline, all right? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jacqueline. Happy birthday to you. All right. Awesome. Awesome. I'm sure you've already been sung to this morning, right, Stephen? <laughs> or like Mark, you're just going to recite it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, today we're going to be starting a new uh, series, a little mini series. Um, and it's going to be titled, Faith That Stays Inflated. Not this past Wednesday, but the Wednesday before. Uh, it seems like every Wednesday we're getting snow, and the roads become pretty hazardous. And uh, two weeks ago, a week ago from this past Wednesday, I was, uh, in the afternoon, I was coming up School Street, coming up toward Highway 8, which is also Washington Road. You can either go to the Square of Washington or you can go uh, to, to Sunnyland. And I was going to be going toward Washington, so I was in a left turn lane. And th at that particular intersection, there's a left turn lane, there's a lane that goes straight, and then there's another lane that, that goes to the right that goes to Sunnyland. And so uh, the roads are pretty, pretty slick, pretty much a mess, and um, I was coming up, so I was going to go left, and as I was sitting there at the light, I got the green arrow for me to go left. So as I was fixing to go left and starting to go left, I noticed that there's this huge dump truck, I mean a big one, not just a little rinky-dink one, I mean this baby was massive, and it comes up in the right lane, and it's going to go right, and so of course they still had the red light. And so it was, it was stopped at the light, and as I was pulling out, I just noticed it in my rearview mirror, but then I also noticed a car that was coming from the square in Washington, and they were going to take a right onto School Street. And there were two ladies in there, and I could tell as I was looking at them that they were having a good time. They were, you know, not excessive, but they were talking and, and, and just you could tell that they had a very pleasant look on their face and they were not going excessively fast. But Sherry and I have been on that intersection many, many times, of course, living there 13 years. And my first thought was, she's going to be trying, they're going to be trying to turn 
on a kind of a slope and kind of a slant, they're going too fast. And as I pulled out, sure enough, they were going too fast, even though they weren't breaking any speed limit laws or anything like that. And as they went to turn, they turned a little bit, but the car did not turn anymore. And it just kept going straight, going straight, going straight. And I thought, oh no, they're going to they're gonna crash into that dump truck. And sure enough, that's what they did. Crashed into the dump truck. Must have done something to the radiator. Steam's coming all out. I think they thought it was going to explode. So they came bailing out both doors and went running and, and stuff. But uh, that's the way life is, isn't it? I mean, here these two ladies were just enjoying their day, enjoying each other's company, talking, smiling, and then in a split second, boom, everything changes. And my first thought was, they're not going to have a good rest of the day. I mean, I'm serious. I just thought, this is not going to be a good day for them. And, and I, I've been there. That's happened to me in the past. And I thought so much. That is how life happens for you and me. And as we get into this series, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. But our goal is to encourage us. Hebrews 10, 24 says, Let us spur one another on toward love and good deeds. That's why we're here. Amen, church? Amen. We're here to spur one another on toward love and good deeds. We're here to encourage. Matter of fact, Hebrews 10, 25, the very next verse, we take that verse out of context so much, thinking about, oh, yeah, I was talking about church attendance, and you better be here if not. You know, man, we're going to be banging on your door. Are you going to get some kind of letter or something like that? That is missing it completely. Because when you take it in context, he said, you know, in 24, you spur one another on toward love and good deeds. So don't get in the habit of missing the assembly. Don't get in the habit of missing the gathering. But as you gather together, encourage one another. Encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching, one day Jesus is going to come back and we want to have a faith that is, that is inflated. Amen? Amen? We want a faith that is strong. And so when we get together like this, it is just simply to encourage each other. And if we don't do that, then we've missed it. Everything else that we do just goes right out the door because that is our purpose for being here, is encouraging one another as we stand and get in the presence of our Father God. Amen? So, uh, Andrea Stringer, and, I, and I, did, I did ask her if I could read this, and she said, yeah, matter of fact, the real question was, I was going to have Andrea come up here and, uh, and, and let her tell it, and I could ask a couple questions off of it, and so this morning I thought, you know what, uh, would you rather me read it or would you still like to come up? I mean, would you come up? Because I called her last night, uh, Mark. <laughs> I called her last night and asked her if she would do this because uh, just the way the Holy Spirit works. And she said, yeah, I'll, I'll come up. But this morning she goes, when I asked her, would you like me? She goes, yeah, would you? So I'll just read it. But it goes right into what we're talking about, and I think a lot of us can relate to this. Uh, this was yesterday at 8.40 a.m., I believe. That's what my uh, Facebook is showing, that uh, she posted this. Guys, I can't even make this stuff up. So last month was awful, all in caps, awful. Fighting insurance companies, drug companies, and pharmacies. Like, seriously, Horrible, again, horrible, all caps. Been there? Not only for Lillian, but also for our other three whose insurance is changing as well. And for those that don't know, they have uh, three foster children as well, and all of them have special needs of one sort or another, so there's just a, a lot of stuff going on. 
um, we were looking at having to come up with literally over $20,000 per month just to pay for Lillian's meds. And for those that don't know, Lillian's got uh, cystic fibrosis. Then to top it off, our other three also have medical behavioral needs that require a lot of different doctors, therapists, and medical supplies, which their new insurance was not going to cover some of. Most recently, we bought a vehicle that was big enough for our family, safe, and almost as much time, a vehicle that we spend almost as much time in that we depend on just as much as our own home. Well, as you would know, that came tumbling down, and we currently have no way to get our entire family anywhere. Um, I am here to tell you, folks, that God is real. He has been and continues to move mountains in ways that I can't even explain. So we've been told so many times that Troy makes too much money to qualify for any medical grants. With annual raises, his income has only gone up. Well, apparently things have changed in the grant world. Not only did we get the grants, but we were able to now afford, is still pushing it, but we're doing it, all of Lillian's meds. The other three insurance companies have also uh, been working on things, and it looks like we only have one issue that we need to figure out now instead of a billion different issues. The truck problem is still there. Their vehicle that they bought two months ago bit the dust. Transmission, possibly something else. Well, it's still there. We unfortunately have to pay to get it fixed. They went to the dealership, made a lot of phone calls there, trying to see if they would do something, and they wouldn't. Uh, so she said uh, it did not get anywhere with anyone over five hours on the phone yesterday. But a super nice guy from church, Rick. Yes, thank you, Rick. Fist bump. Yeah, y'all can applaud that. He's fixing it for us. Yes. So then we were checking costs to rent a vehicle large enough for our family when a family from our kids' school heard about what, we were going, what was going on. And, it's, and now, let me see. Let me read that again. Let's see. So then we were checking costs to rent a vehicle large enough for our family when a family from our kids' school heard about what was going on and is driving their own minivan to our home today which was yesterday, to let us borrow until we can get our truck back. Seriously, guys, God moves mountains all the time. God is good all the time. Yes, I am worried about what else might be wrong with the truck and how we're going to pay for all of this how we will pay for Lillian's meds once the grant money runs out and the search for a new medical companies for our other three, but I know God is already working on that for us. Just like he has already been doing, he will set the path and guide us in the right directions. Thank you, God, for always being there. Hashtag God is real. Hashtag God provides. Hashtag God, God Trust God all the time. Hashtag God is good. So here's the question. I mean, this, this family just blows me away all the time. How do you have a faith that stays inflated? If you've ever seen these children... They are always smiling. Right, Batman? All of them are. The story with Habakkuk. Most time God gives prophets, which is just simply God's Old Testament preachers. That's what a prophet is. Someone who speaks forth the word of God. 
Normally, God gives His Old Testament preachers words to speak to the people. Sometimes it's warnings. Sometimes it's words of encouragement. Uh, But just about all of them, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, any of these other prophets, God gave messages to them to speak to the people. But Habakkuk is different. And you probably picked that up, Mark. Habakkuk is so much different. I really encourage you, if you do have time today or maybe uh, tomorrow, go and, go and read. It, it is. It's only three short chapters. And I don't know how many times I've read Habakkuk, but it was... Matter of fact, this lesson just came over the last day or two, okay? I was already into something else that I was going to do to start this particular series, but I read Habakkuk and I just thought, whoa, this is it. This is how to get started in this series. Because you see, Habakkuk was writing before the Babylonians, before Nebuchadnezzar came and invaded Judah, Jerusalem. Uh, It was just shortly before Daniel. And so what God was telling Habakkuk, Matter of fact, it's in here, okay? I mean, this, God was telling Habakkuk, you know what, Habakkuk? I'm going to blow your mind. I'm going to do something that you're not going to be able to understand. So, Andrew, can you understand all the stuff that's going on in your life, really? I mean, so you buy this new vehicle, and, and I, I, miss, I think I skipped a sentence in there somewhere, but they were, they were thinking this vehicle is going to last us for several years. No problems, Right? And then all of a sudden, the transmission goes out after two months. I mean, Sherry and I, we bought a brand new uh, Nissan. Heather was in college. Money's tight. We're, we're paying for her college. We wanted her to, re- to get out of college debt-free. So we've been eating a lot of beans. Seriously. And so we just about got this car paid off. Heather's about ready to graduate. And I'm thinking, oh yeah, after four years, about four and a half years, man, we're down here to the last payments. Man, and I was already looking at the money we were going to save and, you know, what we're going to do with this money and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know what happened? The transmission went out. So I'm thinking, oh, 100,000 miles, you know, it's under warranty still. We only had 80,000 on it. So I take it to the Nissan dealer and they go, oh no, 60,000 mile warranty. Oh, I know. I've got something like $4,000 or something like that. I mean, we, we, we bought that car thinking 10 years at least, man, we're going to take care of this car, we're going to do all the service, pro- you know, that's supposed to be done on it, all of that stuff, so we're not going to have to worry about vehicles for a while. And sometimes it's hard to understand, why did that happen? Why did that happen? And then with y'all on top of $20,000 uh, $20, a month for medication? And now this? You see, there's so many things that happen in our lives because life happens that we don't understand. And so God is telling Habakkuk, I'm about to do something, Habakkuk, and I'm going to tell you about it, but you're not going to get it. You're not going to understand it. Because what I'm about to do is, I'm about to use your enemy, the Babylonians, and I'm going to use them to invade my people, my Old Testament church, Because my Old Testament church has turned their back on me. But I'm going to use them. Okay? So that's what God does. So Habakkuk is Habakkuk talking to God. He's not talking to the people. He's talking to God about this, and God is talking to Habakkuk about it. And then when you get to the passage that Mark read in chapter 3... He says, here's what Habakkuk says in his prayer to God. Hey, God, you know what? Even though, even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty 
yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me sure-footed as a deer able to tread upon the heights. And that's what I read, Andrea, in your post. Man, this last month was awful. All of this stuff, it was horrible. But even though things are awful, even though things are horrible, and even though I can't see what's all going to be the outcome here, I am still going to praise the Lord because God is good. Amen? Amen. God is good. If you ever, I, I, th- I thought about I thought about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego uh, as, as I was... We've been reading through the Old Testament at Galena Park. Uh, we're in Ezekiel now. Right, Marie? Ezekiel. And it's been good. Not too long ago, we just got through with Daniel. And one of the stories in Daniel that I've always liked ever since I was a little boy was Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego had a rock-solid faith in God. They had a faith that was inflated ever since they were teenage boys, which was apparently when uh, Nebuchadnezzar came and invaded uh, Jerusalem and and had taken them as captive, and and they were probably 15 to 16, maybe 17 years old, along with Daniel. They saw God's working in their life. You remember Nebuchadnezzar wanted to kind of brainwash them, so Nebuchadnezzar was going to feed them uh, food off of his table. But the food that Nebuchadnezzar was going to feed these Jewish boys was the kind of food that God has said, don't eat. So what would you do if you're at this foreign country? You've been taking a slave in this foreign country. you got a ruler that could chop your head off just like that. And he's saying, here, here's food to eat. I mean, you're sitting there looking at T-bone steaks and, and iced tea and, and mashed potatoes and all of that kind of good stuff. And, and you know, you know what? Wait a minute. I'm not supposed to eat that. And you go, you know what? Hey, we'll just eat vegetables and drink water. Knowing that you could upset the king knowing that they could get you killed. But that's what they did, along with Daniel. And they saw God work. Here they are. They're just eating vegetables and drinking water, and instead of losing weight, guess what? They were the strongest. They were buff. They, were, they looked better than the other guys that were eating off the king's table. And then after that, they became governors of different provinces in in Babylonia. In other words, uh, Nebuchadnezzar was giving them high positions. So God is blessing them right and left. And when God is blessing us, it's easy to have a faith that is inflated. But then lo and behold, Nebuchadnezzar builds this huge statue of himself. And he, tell, he tells them, you've got to bow down and you've got to worship me. And Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego go, no, no, we're, we're not going to do that. We can't do that. Their faith is strong. And I was thinking about this for myself, so I'm thinking, oh yeah, you know what, my faith is strong, God, he's come through for me back here, and he came through for me back here, and boy, God is working in my life, my faith is strong. You know what, God, he's going to come through for me, I'm not going to have to worry about this, no, nothing's going to happen to me, they're not going to throw me into this fiery furnace, and where they built this huge statue of Nebuchadnezzar, there was this furnace where they'd been burning all of these metals down. So if anybody did not fall down and worship that statue, they were going to be thrown into that furnace. 
So I would imagine if, you know, man, God, he's always been here. He's always been with me. Uh, my faith is strong. And so God's going to come through. What would you be thinking if you were Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, and all of a sudden these big strong armed guards, they come up and they get you by the, you know, kind of hook in your arm there, and they start moving you toward that furnace. What are you thinking then? If that was you, what would you be thinking? Okay, God. We're getting kind of close here. I can begin to feel the heat coming out of that furnace. Okay, God, it's time to come through. And then all of a sudden, there they are, and they get tossed into this furnace. Where would your faith be? Where would my faith be? But you see, they said, you know what, Nebuchadnezzar, we're going to serve our God no matter what. If our God releases us, we're going to serve him. We're going to praise him. But you know what, even if he doesn't release us and he throw, if we get thrown into this fire, we're still going to praise him. How do you have a faith that stays inflated? You see, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they were in God's plan. They were in his purpose. They were so wrapped up in God that it never even dawned on them to ever reject God. I think about Habakkuk. Habakkuk was in God's plan. God, Habakkuk was in God's purpose. God had a plan and a purpose. Kind of Aaron and, and Terry, kind of like what we were talking about this morning in class. That we're all God's workmanship. And that he has created us in Christ Jesus to do what? To do good works that he planned in advance for us to do. Do you realize that God has a plan for you? That God has a purpose for your life? That God has things planned and purpose for your life? Not my life, your life. Okay, he has things for me, but the things he has planned for me may not be what Rick needs to be doing. That may not be the same thing that he has purpose for Rick's life or Dan's life. And too often what we do is we look at what somebody else is doing. I look at what Dan is doing, and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to do what Dan is doing. And I feel like that I'm walking around with concrete blocks on my feet because that's not what God had purpose for me. These, these people that we read about, they were in God's plan, they were in his purpose, and they were fulfilling what God had given them to do. How about you? See, if you're just simply coming and sitting in this church building this morning, and then you get up and you leave out of here and nothing really changes, I want to tell you something. When something happens that you don't understand, when that happens, your faith will deflate. You will get T-boned at an intersection, and all of a sudden your whole life will fall apart, and you'll begin to question God. You'll begin to question everything about your life. But whenever I read Andrea's post, I didn't know where it was going when I'm saying awful and horrible and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? It's just like Habakkuk. After it got down to the end, it was like, but you know what? I'm still going to praise the Lord. God is good. Folks, we have a God who is our way maker. He makes a way. That's what his whole story is about. Failure is not in God's vocabulary. Think about it. Is it? Failure is not in God's vocabulary. Failure is not part of God's character. Failure is not part of God's nature. It's not who he is at all. God is not about failure. God is about providing a way. No matter what situation, no matter what circumstance, and instead of our faith deflating, we will have a faith that stays inflated. And so what we're going to do for the next two, maybe three weeks, we're going to look at some specifics on this.
Faith that stays inflated. But it all begins with the one who died on that cross. Do you know him? I'm not talking about knowing facts about, oh yeah, he was born in Bethlehem. God used Mary. Joseph was just I'm not talking about that stuff. Do you know him? Do you feel his presence with you every single day? Whether we're battling insurance companies, broken down vehicles, broken marriages, rebellious kids, elderly parents that we're trying to work with and get things taken care of for them. And there's so much red tape in all of this stuff that is frustrating. But do you know Jesus? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ totally and completely? Every single day, His blood washes over us. Isn't that great? Every single day. His blood continuously cleanses us from all of our sins. That's what Jesus' best bud, John, said in 1 John. Purifies us from every sin. Every single day. It's, when you're walking with Jesus, it's like being baptized all over again. Every single day. Do you know Him? Have you been baptized? Sometimes people go, well, you know, yeah, but you know what? Why do I need to be baptized? Simple answer is because Jesus said to. Matter of fact, that's what Jesus told us to do uh, before he ascended back into heaven. He said, I want you to go and I want you to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then teaching them to obey everything else I have commanded you to do. Have you been baptized? Have you surrendered your life to Jesus? You can do that now. In just a moment, Dan's going to lead us in a song. Um, have you been to Jesus? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Like uh, Jim Meeks back here. Maybe you're sitting here and you're thinking about this, but you know what? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, you know, I need to talk more, and that's what Jim and I did, right, Jim? We talked more, and maybe that's where you're at, and you can do that. We can get together for a cup of coffee somewhere this week. We can talk about it more, look at Scripture. But I just want to encourage you today that life is going to throw us some curves. And you can come into a church building anywhere in this city and get pumped up. But so many times when you walk out the door, or we walk out these doors, all of a sudden life happens and everything just kind of goes down. But it doesn't have to. If you need to come for any reason, why don't you do so as we stand and sing. Have you been?